Welcome to Granjeno, Texas. We're pleased to have you in our home. And what's your name, sir? My name is Rafael Garza. Rafael, thank you. And my name is Jaime Cortez. Jaime, Rafael and Jaime. We're in Granjeno, Texas. Um, Rafael, you know the city very well. You were one of the founders of the city back in the 90s, early 90s. Tell us a little, about, a little bit about this city. Well, we incorporated in 1993. But uh, in history-wise, our community has been established since 1767. It was one of the first uh, colonial areas in South Texas. And our families have been here, uh, well, since 1767. Uh, we're cousins, he and I, and we come from the original settlers of South Texas. Jaime, how many people live in Grand Hena? I would say around 300 approximately. A couple years back in maybe 2012 were about 500, so around there. And uh, we'll tell the viewers now why we're here today, why I wanted to interview both of you. Quite a big change happened to Grand Hemo earlier this year. You got broadband internet. Well, we got, um, I'm sorry, not, not broadband, we got uh, fiber, optics. fiber optic internet, which is an amazing, amazing uh, step for us in, in technology. It, it really helped us to uh, get our community in touch with the rest of the world much faster, much, much more adequate and, and uh, without interruptions. And, uh, you know, we're right now in a crucial time in, 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 our, in our history because of COVID and what is, how it's affected uh, the, the need for internet, especially internet that's reliable. Um, I happen to be the school board president for Hidalgo Independent School District, and uh, roughly two and a half years ago, almost going on three, when COVID first uh, hit the area, nobody was expecting uh, what was coming with it. And none of us knew that we were gonna be going into a new age of online learning. Um, our staff, our teachers, all our students, our parents out there, the rest of the world had the same issues we had, which was we needed good, reliable internet. At the time we relied on broadband, um, it had its limitations. We did the best we could under the circumstances, but fortunately we were able to get uh, smart comm communications to establish their, uh, their network out here, and it has been a Oh, no. Will you give a big shout out to Smartcom? Hey guys from Smartcom, it's Jaime here. Uh, I mean, thanks guys for coming out here and installing fiber optics connections out here compared to what we had prior, which is uh, wireless broadband or LTE services from other um, cellular carriers that are out there. And this in particular has been a game changer, definitely, in terms of responsiveness when we're talking about ping or milliseconds. when. I know there's a lot of people out here that are probably going to be gamers and that is a, a difference that you're going to be seeing definitely and we're talking about streaming services from uh, Netflix or Hulu things of that nature it is absolutely a game changer for many folks here and for those who have a lot of family here in a household that have more than 20 devices 30 devices it is very hard to adapt to a wireless broadband where you're limited in terms of the download rate or upload rate and everyone sharing that same connection is very hard to establish a good connection to the outside world and therefore family members are going to be saying hey i can't use the internet can you you know get off get off of it for a minute or two but it has been a great game changer for them Let's from smart back before smart come mm -hmm. right here just how bad was it uh, I mean, I wouldn't say it's bad. I mean, I'm grateful that we had wireless broadband at least where it, it, it was an antenna on top of the households where we established a point-to-point -point connection from the household to a an antenna across the field where you can see it from a distance and it must establish that connection. And if trees get in the way, if it's raining, whatever it may be, if it's foggy, all those elements can affect that signal greatly. And you can see that performance uh, impact that particular service itself. Rafael, how many families do you think are benefiting from this faster service? Has it been, has it proven popular? It has, it has proven very popular. Uh, of course we have a lot of older residents 
people are not too tech savvy at times. So, uh, you know, people like myself and Jaime, you know, we, we uh, pass the word, word of mouth, you know, we try to explain uh, the, the changes that we've made and we've seen in our, in our homes and in, in, in uh, the speed of our technology. Um, I'll give you an example. I, I, I my, in my, my household is a large, large household. We have six daughters, uh, five of them living at home with us. The oldest is already married on her own. But out of those five, one is a high school student and the other four are college students. And uh, everybody takes online courses. And um, most of that is not uh, online courses like from the old days where you just kind of just downloaded your syllabus and read along. No, a lot of this is classroom participation and uh, a lot of heavy streaming. So when you've got multiple, you know, students at, at once at, at doing their their different assignments, well, you can see where something like like uh, SmartComs uh, fiber optic is extremely beneficial because there is no lag, there is no lag time. Uh, we're not at the mercy of the elements, uh, cloudiness, rain, or storms affecting the uh, the ability to receive the signal or tree lines affecting it. You know, uh, there's some residents who unfortunately weren't able to have broadband because they could not reach the signal which the closest tower was about 15 miles away in, in Hidalgo. And, uh, you know, it, those are logistic, logistical problems that uh, with, with what we have now through SmartCam, we don't have to worry about. And I understand your mayor is one of the beneficiaries as well. She has signed up. Definitely. Our mayor has been one of the people What's leading us, Yvette Cabrera, and she has been at the forefront leading this. Uh, from the get-go, you know, I'm very grateful to our to our elected officials here at, at Gran Geno because they had great foresight. They they really thought ahead and, and thought outside the box and helped us to bring this to our area. Let's pass it back to Jaime. Jaime, um, what's I going to ask? Um, for people of your age, yeah. you know, the younger generation that, that really want to, to get online, that you, you've got your schoolwork to do, correct, uh, and and you like to play games, you know, with video games on online. What's it been like for your generation? So, at least from my perspective, uh, I mean, I went to college, I graduated, but this was prior before getting the fiber optics. But so after that, I had to get into the professional environment, started working, started making a career out of things, out of the education I obtained. So for me, I went ahead and actually, you know, made, made my own, uh, my passion to be in IT. So I am in IT. I know a lot of different things about the ins and outs of IT from cybersecurity to networking to the technical aspect of things. But I, I believe it's going to be a great game changer because I still stream. I still watch Netflix. I mean, that's a lot of us that we all do. As for gaming, I mean, I haven't gamed in a while, but I know it's going to work. It's going to be outstanding with that one millisecond response time compared to before again the wireless broadband with the trees the environment we're looking at a, maybe a hundred milliseconds and in reality that is one second and that's one second too late if you're gaming out there or you're doing some online maybe shopping or work or school there's going to be that definite lag that you're going to be noticing there but for all those who take advantage of this it's going to be an absolute game changer especially with that one millisecond response time when it's it's right then and there. It's instant. We've done a lot of stories about uh, broadband in the valley. Some some cities are doing their own thing because they're frustrated. The private sector didn't step up to the plate and, and get everyone connected. Yeah. In Grand Hino, that's not the case. SmartCom came in and uh, provided the Correct. fiber optics. But when we've done all these stories, so many people have said it's 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 all about economic development. If you have the fastest high speed. Mm -hmm. available you are an attractive community for investment for companies coming into the town do you feel that's the case for Grand Heno? I believe so I mean I definitely might see us change in a couple of years we're probably going to be seeing more construction down here in Gran Heno we're seeing some uh, water development pipes you know going uh, trench through Gran Heno or the farmland that's there to build more households further I would say further west from here not maybe like three miles from here and Maybe it's a result, direct result, having internet, you know, fiber optics being deployed out here in Granjeno, and I'm pretty sure it may spread either 
you know, west, north, it doesn't matter, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be attracting a lot more investment down here in Gran Geno itself. Rafael, do you want to answer that one as well? Definitely, I definitely believe that um, the uh, availability of, of, uh, of high-speed internet will, will help in developing our area. I mean, this is one of the original frontiers. Now we're in the technological, you know, frontier. Uh, the, 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 the sky's the limit as far as technology goes nowadays. But the faster you can get your product out, that's what, you know, people look for. Companies look for, residents, residential areas look for. So the fact that we have the, the uh, fiber optics already laid out here, uh, it's like back in the old days having a railroad come to town. Uh, now it's just digital. You know, we have the, the digital railroad or the digital highway, whatever you want to label it or call it, it brings development, it brings growth. Um, just north of us, you'll see fields about a mile or two away. It's all develop, developed area. So this area is slated for development. Um, we love seeing our community the way it is, but of course we know that with everything change comes we're, and we're preparing for that we're preparing for the change we're preparing for um, the next step into what technology takes us and go, let's go back to earlier this year mm -hmm. when when you heard that smart Com was coming into town could you believe it did you ever think you well, get speeds <laughs> at this this fast I was ecstatic I mean I, I you know I was super happy as, as an elected official for the, with the school district I knew that that's what our students needed. Um, they needed, again, like I said, fast, reliable internet service where if we ever had to, to go back to um, uh, online classes, it would be able to instantaneously connect with our, with our teachers and our students and also with the university and, and, and South Texas College. Closing remarks from you, Jaime. Uh, and what can I say? I mean, I agree. When I first got that letter in the mail about Smartcom being in town for a town hall meeting, I jumped on in and it was packed. I believe you were packed. there. It was about 50 people of the community that we all came in here. We started asking questions and I believe all of us pretty much signed up for Smartcom at that point. And it was but, affordable? Oh. Yes, it's definitely affordable, I would say, uh, compared to what we were paying then with our wireless broadband solutions. We're paying the same thing, but we're getting a tremendous more amount of speed, and it's a game changer, and it's stable. I mean, I haven't got no downtime whatsoever. I, I think you agree with me with that. I was paying about close to a little over $100 for maybe 15 MV, MPPs. And uh, me megabytes down or the download rate, but now he's at one gigabit, one which gigabyte. is 1,000 megabytes, which is absolutely you know, phenomenal. You can't, you can't compare the speed. It's... it's, it's uh, it's like having a, a speed of light as compared to horse and buggy, you know what I mean? From going to 15 to a gigabyte, that's... Have you got any spare housing down here? I know someone that would love to come <laughs> down. It's a home. wonderful place to, to raise a family. Um, I mean, I grew up in this little town and I, I can trace back all our family since since we first established you know ourselves here in 1767 so I, I feel it's an honor and a privilege to, to grow up in this town um, we know everybody here and, and uh, it's so safe it's it's just wonderful yeah. well thank you both so Jaime and, and Raphael thank you so much for today's interview and this very exciting news that you've got the fastest uh, high-speed internet available in Little Grand <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, You know, this little town was the first one to go uh, completely solar-powered about, oh my God. Almost, it, was, it was quite a while yeah, ago. Yeah, it was my, one of my projects. Uh, and, and for a good while, like for 10 years, we had every, every city light uh, solar-powered. So I think we were one of the first, I don't know if it was in the nation, but we were... So you're first. a city of firsts as well. We, well, when you're small, you have to be feisty and you have to be tough and you have to think outside the box because you make every dollar stretch and every decision counts. So. Thank you both so Thank much you. for today's interview. Of course. <laughs>